welcome to Fable Film Fanatic. This following episode is going to be kind of different and weird. And in the sense that I'm not going to be the host of this episode. I'm not going to be in this episode because of some situations I've been having. My friend and my editor, Jer Taker, did me a huge solid, a huge favor of hosting this episode for me so that way we wouldn't have to cancel it last minute on the directors and stars of the film. So please give my friend an applause and uh, I hope you are the biggest fan of your takers I am. Welcome to Faithful Film Fanatic. This is not Terry. This is Jared Taker. I'm an American musician, entrepreneur, content creator, wrestler, and medical worker, and I'm also an editor for Faithful Film Fanatic. Terry could not be here today uh, due to a few situations he was uh, trying to, you know, fix. He had he had some issues, so he could not make it. I will be taking over for today. And today we got Marcelo um, Brion, or did I say yep. that right? Sorry. All right. And then uh, Tony Devoto. And Mark Vasconcelos, all in the making of the movie that's dropping, well, it is today, but for once this drops, it won't be today anymore. On um, March 8th, it is dropping, I guess, right? Yep. Today. So um, right. we have two actors in the movie and the director from the movie. You guys can all say hello and have a little intro for yourself. How about we start with Marcelo? Well, hi, everybody. Mark, nice to see you. Tony, nice to see you. Likewise. Uh, I'm the producer director of the film. Uh, it's actually coming out today, like this. Uh, it's uh, February 25th, playing in Arizona. Creative. All right, and then how about we get started next, uh, Tony? Hi, my name is Tony Devoto. I'm uh, Tony in the movie and executive producer as well. And uh, yeah, we're very excited to be here. Thanks for, uh, for doing this and for having us. So, uh, hello, everyone. Hey, Mark. Hey, Grion. How you guys doing? <laughs> it's good to be back. <laughs> All right, Mark. Hey, everyone. My name is Mark Vasconcelos. I am uh, a.k.a. Garrett, man. Uh, two decades in the making. So we're here. We're in theaters. We're uh, ready to unleash the beast. And hopefully people will uh, enjoy the ride. For sure. Exactly. For sure. Amen. All righty. So um, we're going to get started today with um, a little bit of like the interviewing and all that stuff. And then there'll be a few extra questions and stuff like that. And like a little bit of review in there. So uh, we're going to start off with uh, with Marcelo. What made you want to start um, Energia Films? Well, I mean, when I was putting the movie together um, and I finally got ahead a of, you know, I was trying to accomplish this dream of making a movie and I put the company together and I was like, you know what? I'm going to uh, start with the company and hopefully down the road I can make more movies, more films, you know, and then uh, I, I, I treat it as a business, you know, to me, this is a business. It's, I mean, I love what I'm doing with the film, but you know, I want this to provide for families. I want to hire more people, be able to make more movies, you know, so I need the help of anybody who's watching this podcast right now uh, to please, you know, Google search, watch, rent, buy the prototype. You know, support us so we can, you know, make more movies. For sure, for sure. That's awesome. I'm glad that things are working out for you. And I feel like this is just the beginning for you. Am I correct? Yes. I mean, it's just, like Mark was saying, it took us a, quite, a, quite a bit of time to put it all together. You know, it's been a long time in the making. Um, I'm very happy with the final result. Um, you know, we, I, I always treated the film, you know, with great respect to the crew and cast. And I wanted to have great, great quality. I rejected work many times. I was, you know, subpar. I wanted to make it as good as possible, even though it's a low budget film, you know, I might, you know, it's my first future film, uh, you know, in a different language, in a different country for me. I still wanted to, you know, make sure it was, you know, ready, you know, 100%, you know, I was very like meticulous about everything, you know, looking at every detail, you know, trying to, you know, that's probably why it took a little longer than expected as well. Well, I'm sure that things will probably speed up as you continue the process of uh, creating films and whatnot. And I'm glad that, you know, everything worked down in your favor, whether or not it was as good as you wanted it. But that is good that you were able to, you know, actually pull it off. Because some I hear many times people go into creating a film and, you know, sometimes they fall short on some things and they don't continue it. So that's awesome that you're able to actually, you know, totally 
go through with everything that you wanted to go through with, and you know, whether you had some difficult times or whatnot, you actually pulled through and accomplished it. That's awesome. Yeah, um, I agree. All righty. So you wrote your first screenplay at 11 years old. You did. Um, how did you finish it? And uh, was this your first screen? And what, uh, what was your first screenplay about? Sorry about that. Oh, well, I was in elementary school and I was watching like everybody else in you know, Star Wars and, and from the 80s. And and I wrote a little film and then I wanted to make it into a, a big film. And it was about these kids that get lost and they found these artifacts and they travel into uh, TV shows and movies and they get lost inter with the main characters of these famous shows and movies and they go back and forth. There's a lot of things going on. I was like, you know, I was a kid, you know, fantasizing about, um, but, you know, and then, uh, you know, but I, I mean, I believe I still have that kid inside of me. That's probably why I, you know, I was you know, pursuing this, you know, see, I've been pursuing this for a long time. So. Well, that's a great, yeah. Making, making your dreams come true, basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Let's see. What was your first screenplay you got made into a movie? Was was this a screenplay that you did for the prototype? Uh, I started as a short film when I met Mark in the office that we had in Hollywood, uh, and Tony. Um, I started as a short film called Invasion. And uh, what I did when I we finished shooting that little short, uh, I actually wanted to make it into a feature film. That was the plan. So I met with, the, I remember having a meeting with the actors, with uh, Mark and uh, Frank Spinelli, the other lead actor, he's not here, but lead also as well. And I said, you know, guys, this is great, we made it, and uh, it would be great if we could actually make it into a feature film, because, you know, feature films are commercials. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna sure. get a closure, and you're gonna get a, so, and they are like, yeah, let's continue. I mean, not knowing how long it, you know, it was gonna take, you know, how hard it was gonna be. Uh, but, you know, and remember, I started the movie like in 16 millimeter, actually, in actual film. Oh so yeah, that was, that was one of my yeah. I wanted to shoot in film. I was you know that was my my goal. Oh wow, nice, nice. Um, so what about writing? Did you fall in love with? Did you always want to be like a screenwriter? Uh, well, I came to the states with a bigger screenplay, you know, a bigger movie that I have. It's called The Seventh. That's actually what I made the move to the United States when I was back in Buenos Aires. One of the producers there told me to continue uh, my pursuit in, the, in, in in LA. This was a sci-fi big movie, you know, like you can imagine a big film, you know, sci-fi. But, you know, when I got to LA, you know, people were telling me, oh, this is not gonna happen. You know, you start a little smaller. So that's what I did. You know, I, I, I start, and then I, I hired a couple of writers, Stephen Carandi and Stephen Brown. And we worked out the first draft for the, for the film, for the prototype, um, you know, and eventually I kept, I, I kept close to, the original for most of the part, you know, but most like, you know, one of the actors eventually, you know, left it, abandoned the project, you know, he was a supporting. So I, I had to rewrite a few things, you know, created new scenes and sequences, but you know, in the end it worked out well. If you don't mind me asking what, what um, position did, were they uh, playing, like playing in the, for the, or what role did they play in, into the, in the movie or whatnot? That the one who left? Uh, well, he was playing virtual Conway. I mean, you've seen the movie. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some way, the guy with the blue eyes, that he's yes, you know, yeah. from Morocco, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, um, how long do you think that prolonged the uh, final project? Because of the leaving of one no. of the, not too long. I'm losing the internet. Oh my god. Oh. I think I think if if I may, are you having trouble, Marcelo, hearing or? Marcelo, oh, he froze. Yeah, it was it was a combination of a lot of things. Um, I mean, the actor leaving, obviously, he had to reroute a bunch of you know, rewrite a bunch of it um, just to accommodate that sort of that gap. But but there was also issues, you know. Obviously, this was done, and, and that's and that's the, the, the commendable thing. This was done on on a waiter salary, uh, on some you know investments from some of executive producers and, and people that believed in him. And basically, you know, it's not it's not easy, especially because it's a very, um, you know, uh, ambitious movie. Obviously, sci fi is difficult. You got a lot of uh, special effects to take care of. And, and, you know, obviously you can't come up with the money. So it was a, a thing that was just, uh, you know, he had to move, went back to Italy for a few yeah, no. years. Continue. I thought, you know, it was going to be done. Uh, I said, if he's got to go, then the movie's done. And he, no, he continued working in Italy. And brought you know brought the actors to Italy, continued filming. Uh, Marcelo, you're back. Uh, just just pick it back yeah, up. I'll I don't know what happened. <laughs> so, Mark is still. I mean, he was driving, I think, or moving around. Mark will be back. Yeah. 
But yeah, he was going on and explaining a little bit about you know how it prolonged the uh, the process of the of creating the the film or whatnot. Um, do you want to go? You know, he said he said you know a little bit, but do you want to you know continue? Um, well, off you know, what we were talking I about through many you know, like many different obstacles, you know, and to you know get it all done in the end, you know, and it was like you know one of the it, besides you know shooting the film, you know, putting all these you know ideas together into you know a, a coherent story and storyline and everything else. Over the time, the other, you know, the biggest obstacle probably was the visual effects. Um, mm -hmm. when I, I cut a draft, uh, um, a rough cut of the film in 2005, I think, and I hired this editor, uh, Dan. And Dan, he cut the rough cut of all the 16 millimeter, and I, I went to the editing bay and he played it back in the big screen. First time ever I've seen the movie, like the rough cut, and I loved it. And then said, okay. And then I took that to a producer, and the guy goes, well, you told me it's a sci-fi. And I say, yeah, well, where are the special effects? Well, they'll come. Well, I say, how many do I need? I say, well, at least 100. I said, 100 effects? Yeah, visual effects. That's going to be a lot of money. I can't do that. He said, well, you have to. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. So we ended up having more than 100, to be honest with you. We went over a board, like over 500. Oh, wow. So this was been, you know, it was a huge challenge. And then, you know, then the, the guy who was doing the green screen stuff actually, you know, captured the footage, not the, you know, it wasn't great. I mean, it was all over the place. It was good, bad, ugly, terrible, great. Oh, boy. So that took a lot of time in post-production to fix and, you know, and, and correct and do what was you know, many, many you know, hours spent and money, uh, you know, and not many people were able to complete it you know, until the last guy. The last company that you know, I was telling you off, offline that you know that was a company that actually you know finished it in three years. Yeah, ago. yeah. So uh, you originally wrote this screenplay while you were uh, still in college. Uh, we're talking about I think the original one that when you were uh, eleven years old uh, or something like. Yeah, because I'm 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 reading off the questions that uh, were given to me. Uh, from then to now, how many changes did you have to make the script? Um, in the making of the film, did you have to kiss anything goodbye? You said a little bit about. That. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the actors, you know, left the project, uh, so that changed. Uh, I mean, actually, that made it better. Made it, I, I went also. I went full sci-fi, uh, and then it became, uh, uh, you know, uh, I used it as an advantage. You know, sci-fi, time travel, you know, memory loss, you know, so uh, the blue liquid. So uh, a lot of things happening in the film, and then, um, uh, you know. Many rewrites, honestly, you know, because I was adapting to what's com what was coming to me. You know, sometimes I, I was able to shoot a lot more, and sometimes I couldn't. I had to do like a lot of things in one day. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, well, also, also having to move to Italy and then continuing in Italy is, is different. Obviously, a different, you know, different scenes, different different scenery, yeah. and adapting, bringing the actors. I was telling Jertaker bringing the actors from here to Italy to continue filming while, you know, the years yep. that you were there. So it, it's all very, you know, very commendable that, that you kept on pushing through. And yeah, uh, probably yeah. everybody thought that I was done, you know, I was never going to finish a movie. It was never going to come back and it was gone, done. And then, you know, when we got actually to shoot in Italy, we were like, okay, well, this is cool. I was here. <laughs> so, and, and actually in the film, it looks, you know, you go from a setting, you know, and then you, all of a sudden you change the scenery and you're in Europe, you know, it feels a lot different, you know, it's like, oh, like a fresh air, you know, you weren't expecting that, like you weren't expecting the end of the movie, which we did near Tombstone, you know, recently, you're not expecting that twist, you know, it's another thing that we added later on. So, um, well, that's, that's great that you're able to, yeah, pull it off even, you know, not having the same setting, because a lot of times, I, I know, because like with music videos and whatnot, if there's a place that I was able to film at and now not able to film at, you know, say uh, it's a multiple film shoot or something, uh, day film shoot or whatnot, um, it's very complicated to try to mimic, you know, something else that, you know, yeah. wasn't the same place. So I yeah. totally understand that, you know. And, and they you know, they age naturally, you know, it's no makeup. It's actually <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. But, uh, you know, Mark is going through a lot of things in the movie and in the character, Gary, and he's actually happening, you know, it's actually, you can see it and it plays really well. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's, that's great that, you, you know, all that was able to work out and you were able to pull it off and, you know, Get the whole movie together even with that you know without the same settings which you know it doesn't always happen you know so that's that was great um did the uh pandemic create any obstacles for you in directing this movie uh we actually shot i was last year uh you know we took all the precautions that we needed to take you know all the vaccinations all the vaccination cards uh everybody was with masks gloves you know we kept the six feet distance 
I shot exterior, you know, it was, you know, I mean, we, we I, I wanted to do that extra, you know, sequence. So everybody was, you know, happy to do it, you know, or, you know, for all filmmakers here. So, you know, we want to make it, you know, to the end. So we want to see the final film come out. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy that we did it actually. Yeah, for sure. So do you think that this is actually my question? Do you think that the pandemic almost gave you like uh, a, a, the type of obstacle that will, you know, push you to be prepared for later obstacles? Uh, well, I, you know, I've been through a lot of personal, you know, I had a, a huge car accident uh, over a year oh, ago. Oh, really? Oh, it's through my shoulder here. I'm in a lot of pain constantly now. Oh, so wow. I survived it, you know. It was a miracle that I survived it. Yeah, that's, that's so, uh, crazy. Wow. I ended up in the hospital, you know, so that put things in real perspective for me. And I was like, you know what? I had to finish the movie. I don't care how long. What's, we need to finish this. It has to be done. Wow, um, a lot of determination to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so pandemic was an extra, you know, another Russia war you know, in Ukraine, all this stuff going on, you know. It's delaying, you know, film festivals that I submitted the movie. It's postponing events, you know. Film markets are not happening, you know. Things are, it's a lot of, you know, it's just not, the right, you know, it's what it is right now. We're trying to, you know, you know, it's it's the time that the movie came out, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy though. There's a lot of things that seem like it's pushing it back and pushing it back. But you know, I feel like once it, once it, once it's, you know, once everybody gets to see it, and you know, you, you finally can do all the festivals and the, uh, the you yeah. know, the film things and all that. Uh, that that'll be really great because you know, it shows that you know, even during all these obstacles and you know, things that are holding you back and all that stuff, you were still pushing. You're really determined, and that you know, you're driven, and you know, not let anything stop you from your goal or your dream. You know, that's really awesome. It's Thank good. It's yeah. good qualities to have for sure. Um, did the pandemic make the budget for this film smaller? And uh, was there any scenes or anything you wanted to do but had to scrap due to uh, the budget? Um, there was never a budget, to be honest with you. I mean, it's like uh, I, I, I planned for it, you know. Uh, I talked to Mark and I talked to Frank before, you know, for the final sequence, if they were available and what they thought about it, you know. At that time, you know, the movie did not... Uh, the, 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 the cat that I had did not pass the QC at the laboratory. So they were going to reduce some effects. So that was going to take time. I said, you know what, I, I might as well, you know, give the movie a little, you know, extra kick. Um, and it actually, uh, it worked out well, you know, it, it, made, it made the movie a lot more, uh, another layer of, you know, uh, it was, it was good. But no, a pandemic, you know, it's, it's, it's part of, hopefully we're, we're getting over it now and, you know, probably, you know, soon get back to normal, you know, we can, you know, travel again and, you know, all the events that I was saying, you know, the festivals and stuff like that, people can get together again, you know, face to face, you know, that, that's the best part of it. You know, when you do, you know, deals sure. and meetings and, you know, pay, you know, being face to face, you know, online is great. Yeah, I like it, but, you know, better face to face. So not having a budget, how, how did you manage, you know, pulling off everything that you pulled off? Did you just like invest every penny that you had to it yep. or that's what you He's did? He kept asking me for more money. <laughs> yeah, funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's, it's it's fascinating, but you know it, it, it you know I I I manage you know it's, yeah yeah I work very hard and I manage you know and then you know I'm I don't mind going into debt you know when it's yeah you know, taking the so, right for the right people you know taking risks you know it's fine yes yeah. so what did you do to um get all the money for for the film was there like a like a you know job that you were doing uh, to bring in some income for it or mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I've been working in a fancy, nice uh, restaurant, steakhouse. You know, working my oh, ass nice. for the longest time. You know, you know, and then you know, using everything that I have you know, around me to to make this happen. You know, it's like for sure, for sure, and I hopefully mean, it pays off soon. I really do hope it well, pays you know, off. Well, the you know, they they take a, a little time to recover. You know, one, two, oh, yeah. years, fine. You know, I mean, we're yeah. gonna be talking about this movie for a while. You know, it's, it's oh like, yeah, for sure. And you know, even I've I've been asked already for the sequel, so we'll see how things go forward, you know, going forward, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to hear about your story coming to Los Angeles in pursuit to make this film. Would you like to tell me about that? Going to LA was a very uh, rude awakening, basically. Uh, I was uh, I was coming from being fa famous. I was already famous. I already had a movie in the movie theaters. I accomplished a lot of things in my country. I was famous for real. I met a lot of big producers. I was, and I Guy told me, the movie you want to make is not sci-fi, it's not for this place. Take a flight, try in LA. And I don't like to give up. I'm, I'm, you know, it's like, you can send me to Ukraine right now, and I'll fight the war, and I'll probably win it. 
you know, I don't give up. <laughs> I want to get it done. So I suffer, you know, I wash dishes. I did what I had to do, you know, for the longest time. And, you know, but uh, I work in a few movie independent films and Roger Corman studios. You know, I met some cool people. But in the end, I was like, you know, I need to make it for my on my own because this is going to I need to prove my talent. You know, basically, that's what I've been working on basically all this time, you know, trying, trying to get the movie wrapped so we can, you know, show it around, you know, and then, you know, uh, the main goal right now is to get financing for the next project. True, you know, true. Was, yeah. The professional financing. You know I mean? Are you are you worried about not being able to come up with that for the next one? Or do you think you'll be able to come up with something to be able to, you know, cover the costs for the next project? Uh, well, we'll see how it, you know, how it goes going forward. You know, I mean, I would like, like I was telling you earlier, like the people that came to the theaters, believe it or not, they like the movie. <laughs> I good, was good. I'm not famous. Nobody knows me. I'm sitting next to them and I can hear everything they're saying. When Mark is song, when the other guy is song, when things are happening, the good stuff, the bad stuff, you know, the stuff that is, you know, funny or not. Funny. So I, I was there for the real reaction, you know, and I saw it and I heard what they were saying, you know, and then, uh, it was, you know, so I, I know the movie works. So the film, if you, you know, accept that the movie is a low budget film, you know, with sci fi, you know, and a thriller, and you, 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 you let the film play and you just get immersed into the story, then you will, yeah. You, you for sure you want to see more films come out. Mm -hmm. So it took you 20 plus years for this film to come to be. Yeah. For you, failure was never an option. I would love to hear your story about what uh, about this story that never made you want to give up. Did you have any moments of feeling discouraged or wanting to throw in the towel? Uh, well, you know, the point is when you get real tired, really, really tired. I mean, and you're like, oh my God, this is, and then you're like in huge debts. I mean, you know, and then you're, you're, closest friends you know are not around and your family is not around you know and you have you don't have a lot of support and you're on your own basically and you know you're just you know i just kept pushing through you know it's just you know i mean hoping for you know it's 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 things are temporary the good ones the bad ones you know it's all temporary we're in this planet for a little while you know and then we go somewhere else and you know i mean uh it's good that we have this conversation now because you know it's it's you know we are actually making it we made it you know it's uh you might not like the movie, you might love the movie, but the movie's made, it's done. Sure. You can watch it, it's streaming right now in a lot of platforms, I just got the email I forward to you guys. It's everywhere, everywhere. Like it's gonna be on cable and anything you want, it's, you just, you're gonna find it through the entire year. You're gonna be able to play. If I get into the film festivals, you'll be like, oh my God, we're in the, who knows what's gonna happen, you know? It's a, I see exactly. a bright future ahead of us. That's what I see. For sure, for sure, I agree. Um, which do you enjoy more, writing or directing, and which one is more difficult? Uh, I enjoy more directing, for sure. Uh, I love to be on on hands on in the in the, in the train on the trenches and you know, on the right and action there. Uh, you know, I like the intensity of making the calls in a few seconds. You know, you have to decide what to do, how to do it. Things move around fast; they change. You know, you have to adapt. Um, you know, you're dealing with people, different personalities, different egos, uh, different ages, different, you know, experience, you know, uh, from the crew, from the cast, you know, everybody involved. And then writing, I think, is more difficult because writing, you're doing it on your own and then you have to, you know, uh, you, you got to get to the end of it and then you have to show it to someone and it's always a rewriting process, you know, and then until finally the people say, okay, well, now it's good. You know, we can do, you know, um, you know, so. I think writing is a lot more difficult. I mean, to me, it comes, you know, more, na I, th I feel more naturally like when I'm directing the film than when I'm, you know, thinking about writing. And uh, do you ever um, experience writer's block? And if so, how do you overcome it? Uh, I have, yeah, yes. And then I, I just stopped doing it for a little while, um, you know, and then come back to it, you know, with fresh eyes, um, you know, and, and reread what I, you know, put together, you know, and then see if it's going to work. Uh, you know, it's a big difference when you're doing a short film into a feature film. So, you know, uh, so, you know, short films, yes, everybody can manage, you know, write, direct, produce. But then when you go into feature films, that's a different, you know, we're talking like an hour and a half, two hour movie, you know, you have to, that's a lot of work, like a lot oh, yeah. of work. 
Definitely, so, yes. I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah. According to um, IMDb, you finance this movie mostly yourself, as we talked about a little bit. Yeah. Ever since 1998, working two jobs as a waiter every day. Yeah. Is that true? Obviously, you did say that was true. Uh, were, yeah. you, um, yeah. were your challenges doing this yourself um, or your journey or whatnot? Uh, was this like a really big challenge doing, you know, basically doing all that? Um, and uh, what was the biggest lesson you learned um, with your journey? Well, first of all, I want to mention Tony because he came through as an investor for me. Um, my other uh, friends that I know, Beans and Claudia and uh, Felice, who passed away, who actually came up with, with, with money, you know, real money. And um, and then probably the hardest part of work, working in a restaurant and making a movie at the same time is that you don't have time. You know, Very true. You know, you're like completely, you know, absorbed. You know, I have to make calls. I cannot make a call. I can reply emails. I cannot go to meetings. I cannot. So, you know, I have to plan out, you know. So the little time that I had, I am always, you know, you know when, I, when, I, when I can, you know, check my phone, you know. The days off that I have, it goes so fast because I have so much stuff, you know, going on. So. Yeah, yeah, I can I can totally relate to that. I, I do multiple things, and and you know it's so hard to to you know get time for everything, and you know it's just like you just gotta work everything into your schedule. It's it's crazy, but that's that's awesome to see other people that are able to pull it off too. You know, helps me continue to wind to push towards my goals as well. Uh, yeah. Did you have any people trying to tell you not to do this? To, you know, trying to whether it be haters or what or whatnot or whatever. Did you have anybody trying to prevent you from dropping this or getting this film out? Many, 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 many. And I'm still, and they're still around. Probably people commenting on the reviews right now. I have a couple of people that they don't leave me alone. They just they, oh, want, they want me to, you know, not to do anything. And, yeah, uh, you know, it, that's all. going to be around. You know, this it's just not. You know, that's how it, it, the entertainment business you know works. You know, it's like did, did that ever bring you down or what or what not? Um, not down, but I'm a little disappointed sometimes because you know we could make so much. The relationships could be so much better. You know, we could do some better movies. You know, to accomplish. It's like you know everybody says no right away. That's just the first. It's like no, 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 no. Yeah, know? and people are like, yeah, okay, and then then then, then you give up because it, they, they they told you no like a hundred times. And you know, I've seen it in in LA when I used to live there. Yeah, it's you know. crazy. Yeah, a lot of people don't don't give you the opportunity until you go and do it. And it's crazy. It's yeah, like at that point, it's yeah. like it's terrible. <laughs> I, I totally relate to that. But uh, you know, that's good that you, you know, didn't let that get you down and you you basically just you know worked around them all and you know pulled it off. Yeah. Where did you get the idea of the uh blue liquid in the film? Um, well, that was part of like the mystery at the beginning when I was telling you about the short film. Um uh that was kind of like uh I always like like superheroes, superpowers, you know, and uh, the you know, I was thinking it, and then I was like, oh well, this could be good, you know, like uh, it will, it's an it, 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 people like alien, you know, and it's an alien supplement, and you can experiment on humans, and you know, and it's it, they don't know what it is, you know, so it's kind of like a mystery itself, you know, they have to find out what it is, what's in it, what what hap what happens when you take it, you know, and, um, you know, so a lot of things, you know, like you can play with it, you know, it's like a you know, the idea of having, you know, uh, you know, a, a superhero, you know, uh, some, you know, like, uh, you know, like the prototype, you know, like Garrett Brown, you know, like the, with the blue liquid, you know, say, like, yeah, well, he'll be the one, he'll be the only one who actually survives it, you know. True, true. You know, what, happens, you know? what is that? This, this is my question. Was that inspired from like anything else that you like another film or, you know, something else that you, you know, you yeah. noticed or seen and then wanted to incorporate it your own way into your own film? Uh, I probably did, subconsciously, uh, not, not that I know, but I'm sure that if you can find references if you look for it. Yeah, I'm sure there is a lot of, uh, you know, things that you can find that they've been made or, you know, they've been, you know, based on or, you know, ideas, you know, and, but, uh, you know, it's my own vision and my own take on it anyway. So at the end, yeah. it's, my, it's the way I put it together. So it's, you know. It's different still. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So last question for you. Were you inspired by any sci-fi stories that encouraged you to create this film? Uh, well, I'm a huge fan of uh, uh, Aliens, Terminator, you know, James Cameron. Um, uh, I think those are phenomenal films. Um, and, you know, I mean, uh, the, the early Spielberg, you know, the 80s, the 70s, you know, Lucas, the early, you know, before the 90s. Um, 
you know, the action movies from the 80s, you know, all the Rambo stuff, you know, the action films with Schwarzenegger, you know, uh, you know, those are kind of the movies that I, you know, I always, you know, I watch them over and over again. I don't, I don't get tired of them. True, true. I, I agree. I mean, those are really great films. So that's that's awesome that you're able to, you know, use those as inspiration. To, you know, are you going to continue creating uh, films like using those as like an inspiration type? Well, I would like to take it to the next step, which will be having a, a professional uh, funding a budget. So uh, I can tell you when we start the movie and when we finish. And, uh, and I probably will deliver the movie to you the day before. That's, <laughs> that's how confident I am that I can make it on time. Awesome. So, awesome. Yeah. Now moving on to uh, Mark Vascon's, uh, Vask, Vasconcelos. Is that how you say it? Vascon Vasconcelos. All right. All right. So what made you want to do your own stunts in the prototype? <laughs> no budget. <laughs> no budget? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's a family affair. We had to pull together. And uh, so Marcelo didn't have a lot of money to spend on other things. So. Tony and I and everybody else jumped in and said, "Heck, let's do it." So you all, so you all did your own stunts. Yep. I think so. Yeah, pretty wow. much. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, Tony um, actually, uh, the shoulder. No, Tony, you had a problem when you you he fell and, and he went you right. Yeah. He yeah. Did. Oh wow. Well, I I missed. There was a we were using mattresses to drop on, <laughs> and uh, and this was uh, I think it was a. Uh, one mattress short. <laughs> oh boy! And I yeah. probably I probably pushed you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was painful, but uh, we're here. <laughs> you survived all it. Good. That, you know, it's all well that ends well. Yeah. So, so, what was the scariest stunt that you had to do for the movie? I don't. I mean, there weren't really a whole lot of stunts. I mean, it was basically the fighting choreography. You mm -hmm. know. Cause that always takes time. It takes practice and then you got to pull it off on the screen. So, and I, I would say that none of us really in this movie are big time stunt people, you know, so we were kind of doing it from scratch and we, you know, we all kind of pieced it together. So I don't, I don't think there was any one particular stunt that was bigger or badder than the other, but the fight scenes the choreography, it was all time consuming and you just had to practice and practice and then shoot it and make sure all the camera angles are right. So it looks real. Yeah. But, uh, other than that, it was kind of just fun. True. True. So you would, you basically say it was like more of a trial and error type thing, you know, focusing on, you know, proper angles and all that stuff and, you know, basically pulling off what you can. Right. Yeah. And it was, it really comes down to the group effort, you know, because oh, yeah, you, know, you had to have certain camera angles. You had to have certain, throws with your punches and things like that so yeah it was definitely a big group effort yeah that's yeah i can imagine yeah because yeah, i'm being in videography myself i know that a lot of times certain things are certain angles and stuff like that so i can imagine yeah that must have been uh pretty uh pretty fun to try pulling off all the, all that stuff especially not having the stunt people and all that stuff you guys had to basically just practice that and uh that's it did it did look really good honestly i have to say because i did watch the movie so that was uh, cool that was great. <laughs> awesome. So what was the most thrilling thing that you could think of for your part in the movie that you really liked to either watch or, you know, act and do for the movie? I, I think it was cool when we actually went to go shoot in Italy. So we spent a couple of weeks in Italy and um, yeah, that was great. You know, we did a lot of guerrilla style shooting. We ended up in St. Peter's Square at the Vatican and we had it all planned out, set up and you know, who would go in and do what? And then the camera guy would come in. No permits, no nothing. We just did it. So that that was fun and it was exciting. And, you know, obviously going to another country to shoot was always cool. And and it was neat that we we're in this little town of Orvieto out in the middle of Tuscany. And we went to go shoot at someone's house. And I ended up knowing the guy who owned the house <laughs> we were friends in italy like 10 years prior so yep. it was kind of a yeah it was kind of a cool small world situation oh wow that's awesome it was so, i i heard that you um have a passion for uh food um do you want to you know get into that a little bit yeah well i mean i've been lucky enough to travel a lot in my life so i've been to whew, lots of different countries i i don't even know the tally anymore uh <laughs> lived in spain for five years lived in italy for three years uh japan 
So, you know, when you get a chance to go to Italy, awesome. It's like no one was complaining about the food. No one was having any issues. It may have been cold, you know, but we had a great time and we ate really, really well. So no complaining here. Oh, wow. So so basically you acquired the, you know, the passion for food and all that stuff through your travels and through where you've been living and stuff like that, right? Yeah, I've been lucky. You know, my dad uh, traveled to like 50 different countries in his uh, career. And so sometimes he took the kids with him. Sometimes we moved and lived in actual different countries. So um, it all kind of adds up to, you know, having the desire to go and taste and see and do and meet and learn, learn new cultures. Yeah. And then um, did you um, cook a lot or whatnot, you know, with your, your passion for food and all that? Uh, while we were there, I tried not to cook at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Let the chefs do it. Um, you know, we were on a working uh, farm ranch, you know, so yeah. they'd, bring in, they'd bring in fresh meats and barbecue it. And it was like, oh, my God, this is so insanely good. And then, of course, a little wine, you know, and nice desserts and, uh, you know, maybe a little grappa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what made you want to do your own uh, food show on YouTube? Oh, uh, well, I didn't actually have a food show. I had a travel show. Oh, okay. So, okay. So when that's cool. When I moved to New Mexico, I really didn't have a job. So um, I said, hey, I haven't seen any kind of television shows about New Mexico. So me and a buddy, you know, kind of just jumped into it. We started going to all these festivals and, um, you know, balloon fiesta and things like that, that happened in New Mexico. And we, we ended up with like 13 episodes and we got it on the CW. We got it on a couple networks in uh, uh, New Mexico. We got it on PBS. And so that was kind of a fun adventure and, you know, oh wow, got to go see and do again. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Like, is it a dream, a dream of yours to do like a food show on the food network? Um, actually my dream right now is I really have a great, show idea and i don't want to give it away but it has to do with cultures all around the world and oh. cultures right here with inside the united states oh wow that, that would be yeah. pretty cool i can't yeah. wait to you know if i see if i see that in the future that would be really cool to get to check that out <laughs> cool well let's hope with some publicity from this film we all get to go on to do bigger and better things yeah oh of course of course and the so, prototype too oh yeah there you go. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be awesome <laughs> So I'm curious, what made you want to do a documentary on YouTube on Rosetta um, Mowry? Oh yeah, the name I, and her family's domestic violence. Um, well, you know, I mean, I've I've always been very uh, tuned into things like that and try to help people when I can. And actually, this gal Rosetta Mowry was a wrote a story about her own family tragedy. And she sent me the book. She found me on MySpace, believe it, back in the day. Oh, wow. Yeah. And she goes, I see you're a filmmaker. You're an actor. You do independent stuff. Would you consider reading my book? And I'm like, sure, send it to me. And she sent it to me. And I never read books in one sitting. Mm-hmm. She, I read her book in one sitting because oh, I was like, wow. oh, my God, this is insane. It, it was pretty brutal. Um, domestic violence at its worst and so we got to talk and i said we should do a documentary about your your book and you know try and help people get it out of domestic violence situations and so i flew to tennessee she flew me to tennessee and uh uh, we shot and did interviews and talked to people that knew her story and we made like a 50 minute interview uh documentary about domestic violence based on her story and then we started showing it in theaters around different towns and all the money that we made, we would give it to domestic violence or uh, centers, you know, that help women and abuse children and stuff like that. So it, it was kind of a, a labor of love that helped a lot of people and hopefully uh, changed some people's lives for the better. Oh, yeah, definitely. Wow. Um, were you always wanting to be a writer? Um. When I was younger, I was always into television and film and stuff like that. I, I went to San Jose State and studied uh, television and film, you know, cameraman, director type stuff. I'm not really big on writing. Um, and now in my older years, 
<laughs> I'm going to try and stick to acting, you know, so um, definitely doing some more acting than I am actually writing or producing or even shooting now. I mean, because all these young guys and young girls who are coming up in the ranks um, and I've taught a few of them, they're great at what they do and they're great with the digital um, platforms and things like that. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to kick back and uh, hopefully do more acting instead of actually producing and shooting. And that's like the main thing that you like doing is acting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm focusing more on my acting now. I've got a couple movies out on uh, digital platforms as well. And then um, we just uh, going to release another movie we did here in Southern New Mexico that's finishing up its film festival circuit and it won several prizes, 15 nominations. Oh, so wow. it's, it's, yeah, it's an interesting film. So uh, I've got one like sci-fi film going on in the theaters, which is way cool. And it'll be all over the world soon. And then uh, we have this uh, kind of strange futuristic drama, um, which is this other movie called Broken Gaietti. So, oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great. I'll have to, you know, stay tuned and keep watching, checking all that oh, stuff yeah. out. For we'll sure. keep everybody posted on social media as what we're all doing. Great, mm -hmm. great. <laughs> so you had a very small role in Breaking Bad. Did you get yeah. to meet Brian Cranston? What was your experience like on Breaking Bad? Go ahead and I was on set that. with I was on set with all of them. Um, you know what? I actually ended up on the cutting room floor. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was part of Uncle Frank's gang, um, and uh, yeah, there was a big shootout, and you know everybody got killed, and I never really got seen on camera because they were shooting over my shoulder most of the time. So, oh, really? but hey, I still get the residual paycheck. I got the IMDb <laughs> credits. I got a bottle of whiskey from Aaron Paul. So you know I was there, man. It was cool. And it was a monstrous set for a television show. I mean, it was like working on a big feature film. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So now we're going to get into the questions for both, um, you know, Mark and um, I'm going to have some questions for you, Tony. Okay. That's so good. what was acting something you always saw yourself doing? That's for both of you guys. So you guys can, you know, answer together. You guys can answer separately or whatever you I'm want. Sorry, to what, was, what was the question again? Uh, was acting something you always saw yourself doing? Mark, let me go. Uh, I actually was, uh, I'm also from Argentina, uh, born and raised. I got here when I was 20, 23, uh, 1990. And since I was, I was in English boarding schools, most of my, you know, uh, primary and secondary school years. So I was doing play uh, since I was eight years old and I loved acting to me. It was, it was just phenomenal. I never studied. I just, I was just, it's, it's like when, you know, when you're a kid and you play cowboys and Indians, um, you're just the cowboy or the Indian. You don't, you don't start doing like, you know, a sense memory and say, oh, I'm going to feel like a cowboy. No, you're just it. You just, whatever you get dished. And, and I've always loved acting. Uh, the reason I came to the United States when I was 23 was because I wanted to be an actor. Um and you know, uh, life life happens in the middle. But um, but I, I did I, I for a very you know um, long time. I did um, music videos. I did a music video for Cypress Hill when they were at oh, the wow. top of their game. I did a video for uh, Rick Astley uh, out in the desert. And then I did you know a <laughs> bunch of um, small roles in films. Yeah. Well, the thing is, videos weren't weren't syndicated. They weren't union, so it was. Um, it was that you would get paid for the day, which is awesome. I mean, I got to meet, you know, uh, Cypress Hill. I got to meet the, the director for that was um, F. Gary Gray, who went on to do amazing things, you know, the, the Italian job, A Man Apart. Um, but, yeah, I've always loved acting. To me, even even to this day, um, I have friends who are making movies and, and I will act for free. <laughs> I don't wow. care. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a general contractor and I make money. I work for a lot of producers and directors. Uh, I'm always trading, you know, gigs with them. Um, I've, I've done stunt work on uh, Gangster Squad, the big movie, um, you know, the um, Ryan Gosling and uh, Sean Penn. There was a, a like, huge, huge, huge movie. And I got to do some stunt work on it due to, you know, trades. 
<laughs> that I did with producers. Um, but yeah, anything that's on the set, anything, I just get an energy that I can do, you know, 16, 20 hours. I don't care. I don't feel <laughs> tired because I've always loved it. And, uh, and what drew me to Marcelo's project was I met him. He was working at a, at Lala's, a restaurant on Melrose. <laughs> You're welcome, Horacio. And, um, and basically, I met him and he, I said, what do you do? He's like, I'm a director. I'm like, okay, well, what are you directing? He's like, oh, I'm working on a movie. And I'm, I said, how do you do it? He's like, oh, I, you know, I work, I gather a certain amount of money, and then I pay the the actors and I buy the film and, and, and I shoot a little bit of my movie at a time. And I was blown away because having been here in L.A. for a few years, uh, yeah, six, seven years, I realized that everybody's waiting for their big break. It's like, oh, I'm waiting for my script to be read and I'm waiting for my big break in, you know, in, in an acting gig or whatever. And Marcelo was, was making his big break by just going ahead and doing it. And that's that's what blew me away. And I said, look, uh, I'm into acting. I said, and, and anything, if you, if you want me to help to be in or whatever, I said, just count me in. And, and he called me. He called me the next time he was going to shoot. Um and we were shooting and he's like, okay, we're done. And I'm like, are you done shooting for the night? It was like two in the morning. He's like, well, no, but I ran out of film. And I said, oh, well, let's go get film. He's like, I don't have any money. I said, well, I don't have any money either. I said, but I got a credit card. So let's go. Is there a place that's open now? And he's like, sure, around the corner. So we went and bought more film so he could finish that shoot. And, uh, and that's how I got involved more on not only on the acting part, which I had a little gig part then, uh, but I got involved in, in, making sure that this movie you know got finished and saw the light of day and and that's how you know it's a very long story but yes that that's that was basically the beginning and uh and i'm very happy to to have been a part of this and and to have you know um met marcelo for sure and the other thing is yeah if you're looking for like a you know blockbuster movie this isn't it but this is a, a labor of love that we never stop pushing forward and the point is that imagine if somebody can push through 23, 24 years and not give up. If you do like a serious budget and, and you know, like a, a big production, this guy can, sit, you know, knock your pants off. So there's uh, that's that's what I think we're doing. We're we're basically, you know, making sure that Marcelo gets the recognition of, of having never given up. And that is something that is commendable so uh in itself it's a movie to be made you know the make awesome. of the prototype <laughs> I, got, I got a little Sorry. story about tony little little one i was we were shooting shooting like he said ran out of money you know he bought the film we it went through processing at the laboratory and i was back to work you know trying to catch up on the bills and everything and the laboratory was calling me uh you know the negatives are ready for pickup mr grion ready for pickup ready for pickup and I didn't have any money to go pick him up. And they, 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 they gave me the final call. By next, whatever, Friday, if you don't come, we'll destroy them. And I go, please don't do that. That's, that's, we have to. I said, you have to pay us the bill. And I was, okay, what am I going to do now? And then uh, Tony called me up and said, are you home? Yeah, I'll, I'll pick you up. And he drove me all the way to Burbank. And, you know, he said, you know, I'll take care of it. He put it on a credit card. He basically saved the film. Uh, I'll pay him. I, I did pay him back for that. You know, it was quite a bit of money. Uh, you know, and he he got the you know the negatives out of the you know the laboratory. You know, that's without awesome. Him, that that's without awesome. Him, that. Without him, I wouldn't have a movie. For yeah. sure, for sure. But that's that's literally so awesome that he was able to. to he do that. He's holding for me some of the negatives for the prototype, right there. Oh wow! <laughs> this is it. <laughs> yeah. That's um, that's so awesome. You know, it's hard to find people that will, you know, come together and, you know, really push to have something, you know, you know, say a dream that you have or something like that, really push to make sure it happens. And that's that's awesome. That's great that you guys met each other and yeah. that you're able to, you know, pull it off, even with that, you know, low budget that you both you both didn't have the budget, really. So you both pulled it together, and, you know, did it. That's awesome. And now going back to uh, Mark, that question for you now was acting something you always saw yourself doing. Uh, no. Actually, you know, like I said, I studied television and film at San Jose State for college. And then uh, after making some music videos and school projects, I jumped on an airplane and went to Italy. <laughs> and I ended up living in Italy for three years as a model. And then uh, 
did some camera work while I was over there. I did a lot of camera work, which was cool. So I, I learned a whole new perspective about camera. And then uh, when uh, I was getting ready to move to LA, then I decided, hey, maybe I'll take some acting lessons. I studied at Stella Adler Conservatory West. Um, study with some really big name actors, which was cool. They weren't big at the time, but they're big now. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I just always had kind of acting as a secondary thing, but now it's kind of moved into the primary thing. Nice, nice. So again, for both of you guys, um, what has been your greatest acting challenge? Mm. Wow. Uh, for me, I did... Uh, for a season, I worked at a place here in Los Angeles called the Bilingual Foundation of the Arts. And they were doing uh, plays from the 13th century Spain, um, classics. And you had to, basically it was theater, of course, which is hard enough to do, but it was bilingual. So you had to learn both scripts in English and Spanish, full full wow. length, and then just do the play. Sundays would you would have one one show was in English, one show was in Spanish. Sometimes you would do two two shows in English or two shows in Spanish. But basically, that was probably the hardest work as far as acting because again, I love acting, but some of it requires work, and uh, and th <laughs> this particular thing was really tough. That that's that's my you know. Tough one. That's it. <laughs> so what about for you, Mark? Um, yeah, I agree with Tony. Theater is always tough. It's brutal because it's you're live, man, and you only get one take. So you just got to nail it and stay in it. Um, so, yeah, theater was a great building block for me. But I'd probably say my uh, toughest role and biggest role was the one that I was just in called Broken Gaetti. You know, and we're, we're shooting on weekends out in the middle of the desert. It's about this tribe that has a little village out in the middle of nowhere. And I'm the village protector. And one day these people come into our village and it just gets really ugly. It's very, it's like Shakespeare on acid, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, really brutal. And everybody's, you know, concocting things against each other and stuff. And, and my past life, um, you know, for this character is really traumatic and grew up without a father and the mother had her legs chopped off when she was young you know so yeah it's just brutal stuff so it, it was tough it was deep it was dirty it was intense and uh you know when you go to work on the weekend as an actor you just you know i'm i'm a method actor i stay in it you know so it, it was brutal you had to show everything so for both of you guys have doing theater and whatnot, have you guys ever been in the middle of your performance and messed up kind of big on something and had to kind of, you know, you know, do something to pull it off? I got a good story, man. I remember one time when I was, I was in theater in Hollywood and we were doing this play called The Shadow Box, which is about, it's a triptych play about three different families going through three different deaths. And I happened to be in love with a, a male person who was dying from AIDS. Dude, that was and that was my that was my monologue. The the monologue serious? from the yeah, I chose that uh, with uh, with Lori Hall when I was in class from the Shadow Box. That that thing is that monologue. That's the cotton swabs. And everything. It's insane. Sorry to have interrupted, but brutal. I never yeah, I never a, knew this. This is this is amazing. It's, it's a it's a brutal play and. Um, so yeah, more super deep digging and history and everything. So anyways, um, the wife of my lover shows up and, and she confronts me about it. And she, she sla bitch slaps me, if I can say that word, <laughs> right in the middle of a scene. And I'm supposed to break down. And, and one night she hit me and I just froze. And I locked up and I, I just totally panicked. And she looked at me and she said the words F you, but it wasn't in the context of the character. It was in the context of her saying it to Mark because you're screwing up. <laughs> so, so she runs off stage, which was, you know, that's the way it was supposed to happen. And then I turn and walk downstage towards the audience. And 
that night, for some reason, my lover's baseball cap had dropped on the floor and I, it was right behind me when I turned around and I looked at it and I bent over to pick it up. And then, boy, did all the tears and the emotion and the memories and all that stuff just came. So kind of a good mistake, but a bad mistake. And it was really kind of one of the only times that I really panicked during a performance like that. But yeah, intense. Wow. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a little story that is with Mark. Uh, it was a Sunday, we're shooting, and it was Brian, he was playing his boss, Heinz, and him, and you know when actors go to auditions and they get callbacks, and they're both, if you believe it, in a town in LA, there are so many actors, and I ha both of them, for the same role, for the same callback, the same Sunday that I'm shooting the movie. <laughs> I'm like, dude, this is happening, like, so... I they were both going to an audition while I'm shooting, so I have to do a little bit with one, wait for the other, come back. I was like, this is not happening, you know what I mean? The same. <laughs> this is Hollywood, baby. <laughs> Anything can happen. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what about for you, Tony? You know, for me, I, I have a very hard time uh, memorizing lines, but once I get them down, they're just part of me. So, and even, even with this double, you know, the, the double language play, um, I, I don't think I've ever, I've ever frozen. Um, I remember being backstage reciting everybody else's lines from, you know, in my head, cause I knew the whole script. I didn't just know my lines. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I've never, I've never actually, you know, in, in theater would be the only the only place you would go through that because in movies sometimes you screw up and, and you're like oh whoa, 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 cut 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 you know uh, I I screwed up and you go again but it's only very little pieces very short pieces you can rehearse you can and usually you know I've been given usually I've been given the liberty to sort of talk my own lines very few Ad times that no you have to stick to the script it's like you know you do <laughs> But so no, I, I don't think I have any uh, any situations where I've suffered because of not remembering my lines. Sorry to disappoint, but um, <laughs> Mark's story is real fun, though. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, was there anything? Maybe not just lines, but anything in general that was like you know something that you know went wrong with you know dur during a live? Maybe oh, that. No, yeah. no. There's there's a there's a this is a funny this is a funny bit that um, when. It, going back to this this Rick Astley video, we were shooting in uh, Lake Mirage, and what happened was, I had started listening to Rick Astley when I was like, you know, 13, 14 years old in Argentina, and this guy had this voice like, and he sounded like he was a big man, an old guy. Uh, turns out he was a, a choir boy singer when I was a kid, and he was younger than I was which I didn't know. I learned, you know, I found out the, in the worst way possible. So we're out in the middle of the desert. I'm the start of the video of this, you know, Rick Astley video, as far as the actors go. And I'm coming out of the makeup trailer and this kid, kid, I was 24, I think 24, 25. This kid was like 21, 22, you know, redhead freckles. And he comes over to the makeup and we cross paths and he's like, Hey, I'm Rick. And my thought was like, yeah, yeah, you know, another guy that wants to say hi to the star of the uh, video. <laughs> <laughs> and I just sort of kept walking and I took two more steps and I'm like, oh, shit, <laughs> I'm Rick. <laughs> uh, it couldn't be. I thought it couldn't be. It cannot be him. He's too young <laughs> to be Rick Astley. Well, but it was. So, uh, so I was like, I was so embarrassed and so worried and i'm like oh they're gonna kick me off the set because i i just dissed the main guy this is ridiculous anyway so we do a take and then he comes over with his girlfriend and they're like oh that was awesome that was so good that was great and i'm like oh man thank you you know i'm, I'm, I'm a big fan and so i sort of corrected and, and you know embellished the whole thing because i was like feeling like i had just him he didn't even care of course he was like you know rick astley but for me it was a mo one of those moments where like oh i just you know i just screwed up royally but that was <laughs>
you know, oh, wow. That's it. So for you both, uh, what is what is your acting process like? You know, whoever wants to go first. Mark? Right. Um, well, like I said, I studied with Stella Adler. It was basically a hardcore method. And uh, so, you know, you go through, you have a bunch of different steps you got to take to prepare. You know, usually when I get scripts, I read them. I just read them through several times without doing anything just to ingest the story. And then you start a series of script breakdown processes. And then you go into character building based on the clues that you get from the script. And um, yeah, it's, it's a whole big building process. So when I step on set, it's all there. It's got to be all there. And I mean, you're portraying someone else's life. So you have to have everything inside you about that character on how they think, how they would react, what their attitude is, what just happened to them in the prior scenes of their lives that brought them to this scene. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of deep, deep, deep digging and, and work. You know, you got to build it. It's not about just, you know, memorizing some lines and hitting your mark and making a couple choices. No way. You got to have a lifetime of your character inside you when you step in front of that camera and that all builds in learning the lines and everything. So the lines are almost secondary, you know, like Tony said, it's all there when he's in front of the camera. So it's, and you just got to let it rip. You know, you, you don't give a crap about what's going on around you or what happened to you that day in your, in your real life. You know, you got a job to do and you, you got to carry it. In this last movie that I just finished, I was fortunate enough to win uh, two Best Actor Awards in film festivals, one in Madrid and one on the East Coast. So Nice. Wow. Yeah, when you just do the work and you're there 110% for your director and, and being true to the character, it pays off. You know, you don't have the time to you know, think about who's doing what or what stars on set or this or that, you know, you're there to do a job. You're there to be that character and glad, you know, hopefully you have a great director too, who can guide you in certain circumstances. If you're off course a little bit, you know, because ultimately it is the director's vision telling the story, but I want to be the best actor possible to help that director tell that story that's awesome <laughs> Amen. so i'm gonna say one thing when i was casting for the prototype for garrett i was down to mark and another guy the other guy had more experience than mark he has done you know three four films already and then i had a talk with both of them i see by the way i have the tapes here you can watch it one day i, have all yeah. the, I do have all the tapes so yeah. um and then i chose mark and I'm glad I did. What made you? What made you choose him? If you don't, if you don't mind saying. Uh, well, he was, you know, he was the perfect look for the role. But you know, as a person, I was like, you know, he, he, I, I noticed right away he's a very strong passion and personality. And I said, he's going to come through for me because I know I don't have enough money to. I cannot tell you the dates. I cannot promise. Make prom. I don't like to make promises, you know. So, but he'll come. He'll come through and he'll he'll deliver when you know things get going and they're get you know we gotta get tough and stuff, and he did, you know here we are twenty something years later you know talking about the movie in nineteen ninety eight. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, awesome. for, as far as uh, character building and whatnot, um, for me, like I said before, um, it, it's like when I did study with. Um, with Laurie Hull, who was a an assistant to Lee Strasberg for many years at the Axter Studios in New York. And then she wrote a book called um, The Strasberg's Method as Taught by Laurie Hull. And she had a class in Santa Monica, which I attended for, I think, a year. Uh, it, and it, you know, it gave me a lot of insights. But again, my acting since I was a kid has always been from within. Um, I don't, like when I did theater, um, we hit, we finished, we finished dinner in school. Right. And then we would go and rehearse the play. And the minute I walked into backstage through the teacher's lounge, which was next to the theater, 
um, I was Philip Lombard or I was, you know, the character. So you, if you ask me anything at all, I answered in real life, in real time, but I was the character. I, I had the accent, I had the demeanor, I had everything. And, and it's the same thing for me. What Mark was saying is totally true. The lines are secondary, but there is one thing that most people don't do. And it's they'll learn, they'll memorize their lines and then wait for their cue to say them. And the problem is they're not listening to the other actor. And when you listen to the other actor and you have a good script, because if the script sucks, chances are you're going to be, you know, good in it, but it's going to suck in general. But if it's a good script and you read off of the other person's emotions, lines, words, whatever, then it just flows. You don't have to, you, you really don't have to memorize because it becomes a conversation that is part of you. And yes, you study the character. If it's somebody in history that's famous, you would study the character, excuse me, of some traits of, you know, of this person. But usually, you know, we're not playing big character roles, like big history roles. I did Cyrano for a, for a student project. And that, you know, that was something that you have to sort of research and see other things and read. But in general, the movies that we do are characters that they create, a writer creates for anybody to interpret and, and just being that character, you create it, you know, you're, it's yourself in the situation that you're put into and then you embellish or do whatever, you know, the, the, the different things. So it's, it's more of a, I think, I think there's a natural talent for being an actor and, and you can't really teach it sense memory and stuff like that. Look, I can cry thinking about a friend of mine who passed away and that doesn't traumatize me. So, so the dig, digging 20 years in the past or something that happened so long ago that will not affect you personally. No, I want it to affect me personally. I want to, I want to be, if, if a scene calls for like just the worst, you know, the worst feeling ever, I'll bring a friend of mine in that passed away months ago. I don't mind because you know what? He's still alive for me and, and he's, with me at that moment it's not like it's going to affect me oh i'm going to be traumatized you know it, it, it's it's just it's to me it's it's whatever works to bring that emotion to the moment that you're doing and it, it you know and you have to let it go after that that's never been a problem for me so that's my process that's okay. strasburg <laughs> strasburg that is strasburg <laughs> well no but but i was doing that since i was eight so i you know, Lori didn't tell, didn't teach me anything. She just basically what reinforced what I was thinking since I was a kid. So there you go. Right. So I have a question for you two. Have you guys ever done a position of acting in which you weren't super passionate about the character? This is not a question that was written for me. This is one that I'm actually curious about. Many times. Really? Yeah, small roles that you at the beginning where you go and these are roles that have no meat in them. Mm -hmm. it, whether it could be you or it could be a million other people just saying, yeah. "Yes, ma'am, thank you." Hey, here you go. <laughs> and you try to you try to make it your own, and it's just three freaking lines. What are you, what are you gonna make it your own with? You know what I mean? There is I no hate those roles. <laughs> three <Yeah>. lines. After. <laughs> it's like no. Mark, so Mark, did you did you have any any that you that you weren't passionate about? Well, yeah, like Tony says, the those smaller you know one liners, two liners, three liners, and you're out. It's you know it's it's. Uh. But the prop the thing is, when I take on a movie role or when I take on a, a role in general, I don't question the character at all. I have no right to, you know. Um, I have to find everything about my characters to love them, whether they're good, bad, terrible, ugly people, broken people, you know, and once you as the actor starts judging the character you're playing, forget it, forget it. Don't be an actor because yep. you have to live that person's life. You have to, you have to show everybody who's watching the screen or the play or whatever everything about that character through your actions, your thoughts, et cetera, et cetera. So for an actor to judge a character that they're playing, to me, it's totally wrong. You know, don't be an actor. 
You know, I, I hate judging people anyway, you know, but we all do it. But as an actor, I get to live the lives of other human beings, whether they're great, whether they're flawed, whether they're broken or whatever. So me going into that portrayal, I can't judge that character at all. I have no right as Mark to do that. I just get in there and be that character the best that I can. But yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is that, that stinks about acting sometimes is that you get these one liners, these two liners, <laughs> and there is no meat. There's nothing to grab onto. It's wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, we're done with you. And you know, you, you, you spend years studying acting, doing bigger films, doing bigger roles. And then someone comes along and says, Hey, can you be a day player for three lines? And I'm like, Oh God, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> My first line with the prototype was positive. Back in <laughs> that was it. <laughs> That's all I said that night that I was filming. Are you sure he left the building? Positive. And that was it. And then obviously because of the rewrites and stuff, Marcelo yeah. brought me back as, as Tony, the clone of Tony, originally yeah. po positive one-liner guy. <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Oh, that's funny. So was there any steps that you guys had to take to really step into a character, you know, say you didn't relate to that character or whatnot. Is there any things off of, you know, filming days or, or like preparation, is anything you had to do for preparation to get you prepared for a role that you are not really accustomed to? Um, yeah. That's a well, tough I, I do that. I do that for all my roles. You know, I really, I'm really big on building past lives um, and moments for my characters. Um, so, like I said, I mean, the biggest one was probably that mo that um, play, The Shadow Box, because I was playing a gay male streetwalker in L.A. That was my role, my background of my role in that play, the way the director wanted it. I was a street prostitute. So, yeah, this guy and I, you know, we would go out on dates. We would go out on dates in Boys Town. Um, Santa Monica Boulevard and and just hang out and just to learn to feel to see to get the mannerisms to know the lingo and stuff like that but that's what a true actor does you know and a true actor can't take a character that that's that rich that deep that full of life no matter if it's good bad or otherwise and present it to an audience truthfully if they haven't done the homework so Try to do as much homework as whatever role I'm playing, but the gay street prostitute was one of my hardest yeah. to do. Yeah. Tough. <laughs> since, what about for you, since Tony? I, well, since I did that same scene, uh, I, I think that was it. Um, and it and it was, I mean, I think I nailed it. Um but the thing is, it was the hardest thing because I think the hardest roles are when you have to be somebody absolutely different. You know, we, we can all sort of create a character around the writing of, 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 the, of the actual character and our personality and sort of intertwine it and mix it together and then create the character. But when you're playing somebody that's, I don't know if the the total opposite, but somebody that you've never, ever, ever, ever had to play or have to experience or, or even remotely close to having been there in a situation like that, that's when it becomes really hard. And, and the, the, other, the other thing that, that I had a very hard time with was I auditioned for Lawrence Bender for a movie that got made and it was called Killing Zoe. Mm -hmm. And it was... Um, the guy that ended up getting the role is Andrew Devoff, who was, I went against him several roles that we, we had a similar look. And the thing is, I was actually, I did the audition. I got a callback and then I got a second callback and I read for Lawrence Bender himself. This was Quentin Tarantino's, you know, partner and writing partner and, and, you know, the, the, a band of part productions. And they wanted me to play a heroin addict or user, which was this crew of, you know, robbers in Paris. I spoke French, so my French passed. Everything was great. I just couldn't do, I'd never done heroin. 
So I really couldn't, I had no clue of, of I had smoked a joint. I had done other things, you know, psychedelics, <laughs> but not, not heroin. So I couldn't give them that. And I think I didn't get the part, not because of a look, not because of a language thing. Cause I had the French down to a T just because I couldn't create, I couldn't relate my personal experience to that character, which is, you know, this, this sort of like thing with heroin, which is almost like, I don't know, just godly, they say. And again, it's, it's those, that was for me, the, the only one time that I, that I missed and I missed because I didn't have, I couldn't, I couldn't go and, and, you know, shoot heroin just to see what it feels like. I didn't go back. Oh, I got it. I got it, man. So <laughs> that's the, yeah, it's one of those things that you can't do. And, and obviously this was on audition. So I couldn't, I didn't have time to research it, we didn't have YouTube back then where you could watch yeah. and say, oh, somebody getting high on heroin and you could say, right. oh, so that's how it's done. Okay, cool. I'll do it. So, yeah, that's uh, that's that's the, you know. Did that bring you down at all that you didn't get the, the role in that? Yeah. Yeah, I did because at that time, uh, first of all, I loved the script. I had gotten the script already. I, I, you know, just read it through in like an hour and a half. I've done and I loved it. And it was going to shoot in Paris. And it was a great, it was uh, Eric Stoltz. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, there was a lot of, of, you know, and and Tarantino and Bender were just it. They had just done, you know, Reservoir Dogs. And they were like the hottest chicken in town. So for me, it was like, shit. Like, yeah. I, I could have been a contender. You know what I mean? That, yeah. that, that's the one time that I, I feel that could have changed my career. And oh, yeah. you know, it didn't happen. It's it's it was what's meant to be, I believe, in, in the universe and things that happen for a reason. I might have gone into doing heroin in Paris. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So we talked about it a little bit, did, but do you guys really kind of like take your character home with you, you know, after a day of shooting or whatnot? Or do you wrap it up for the day when you, I think you guys basically said you basically take it home with you, right? And you actually like continue, you know, practicing the character at home and, you know, throughout your regular life, right? Is that, or am I wrong? Yeah, I, I have to, I do. Cause, cause you, at, by doing this, you are perfecting something that you'll bring later on to the set or to the stage. You have to, cause you're continuously, if you're, see cutting off does unless, unless it's a character that's really, gnarly or something you don't want to you know or, or a classic you know shakespeare you, you wouldn't be you know doing otello on, on on the streets of la but but no but characters that are more personal characters that you create yeah you 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 keep working on them and building on them that's me what about for you mark yeah um i try to leave my characters on set but um like I said, a lot, I do a lot of homework. So I'll lay on my bed for three hours doing homework, building background stories, uh, going over things, you know, relationships, uh, things that affected me that will affect the upcoming scenes for the day. So, and then as I'm going, going to set, what I do is I usually have a soundtrack for my character. What music do they like? What do they listen to? What, what gets them high? What gets them low? And I'll play those songs as I'm going to set. And then usually on set during the whole day, I try to stay as close to character as possible. And then uh, when I'm done, I try to decompress and leave them there. All right. So basically two opposite, you know, ways of going for, you know, you know, practicing your characters and, uh, you know, getting your acting down. That's awesome. <laughs> so any advice for any inspiring actors who are having trouble starting or wanting to be an actor, any advice on how to memorize your lines? <laughs> yeah. Um, Understand the scene that you're doing. <laughs> Understand both of the dialogues. Don't just read yours and memorize, read the whole concept read the scene, understand it, process it, and then you don't have to learn your lines. Because when the other one talks, you'll just respond with the logical response from what you've been reading, which part of it, you know, you're going to miss a couple of, of words here and there until you get the hang of it. But if you're listening to what's being said, as opposed to waiting for that one word that's going to give you your cue, then you're going to do much, much better. Just 
understand the scene you're doing, understand the, the film, understand the characters, not only yours, but the other person opposite you, and the, the rest will just flow. It's easy. Yeah, like, like Tony says, you know, when I get a script, I just read it several times over and over just to help ingest the story. And just by doing that, you're already learning lines subconsciously, you know, for your character. But then I do what's called a total script breakdown, you know, for every scene. I know all my W's, who, what, why, where, when. Um, you know, I have operative words within each sentence. I know what exactly what, what I'm doing, what the character is doing which, with each sentence that they're laying on the other character. And you just all ingest that in your homework. But like Tony said, the most important thing is you let go and you, then you listen. Exactly. If you trust yourself, if you trust yourself as an actor and you've done all your homework properly, which is a lot of homework, a lot. I know a, lo I know a lot of actors that don't do a lot of homework and you can tell they're oh, flat, yeah. they're empty. But uh, when you get to set and you're in character, you let go and you listen. And you see a lot of characters on set freaking out over lines, you know, hey, you want to run lines? I'm like, no, I don't want to run lines, <laughs> you know, maybe sometimes, but you know yeah. what? Do you want to have a either, conversation about the lines? I can do yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> it's either there or it's not by the time you get to set. And if it's not there, you're screwed because you're going to be reaching for it. And if you're reaching for those lines, guess what? You're not being the character. You're being oh, yeah. the actor, you know? Mm -hmm. So... Um, yeah, it's you, you just got to do a ton, a ton of homework, a ton of preparation. So when you get on the set, you get into character, you let go, and then you listen. So for, for all three of you guys, so we'll have this for directing, acting, or all the things that you guys do. Any advice for anybody who's inspired to do these kind of things um, or anybody who's having trouble starting or don't know where to start? What, where do you even start for either directing or acting or, you know, theater or any of that stuff? Where do you start? Where do you how, like what 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 advice can you give? Well, if I made it, the technology that we have right now, it's very accessible. Uh, so, you know, people can actually, you know, test their skills, their talent very quickly. And this, you see if they fall in love with it, you know what I mean? If mm -hmm. they have what it takes. Um, it's not just about trying to be famous or making money. You have to have the passion for it. You know, you have to stick with it uh, for as long as necessary. You know, it's, it's, it's it, all these discussions here about acting and stuff. It's all freelance work. You finish one movie, one play, and you basically are looking for the next one. Uh, you know, and how are you going to get the next one? Because you were a great performer in the last one. Mm -hmm. And over time, you have a reputation, you have a, have, a, you have a name, and then you have multiple offers, you know, and you choose what you like to do, you know. Uh, there, so, is, uh -huh. there, there is there is a, a, a main difference, I think, in, in from when we were, you know, starting out, uh, I think the main the main difference, and and it's and it's huge. It's not just a small difference. We had to audition for people because, uh, I mean, having a camera, high definition camera, didn't exist for us. It did. You you didn't have a, a high def camera that you could film and put together a movie. You had to audition. You had to work for somebody to get known as a as a you know as a PA, then as a as you know uh, whatever. And, and go up in, in the in the ranks of movie making. Today, first of all, you have classes online uh, from like major people, the, 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 you know, the master classes that you have directors giving classes that you can pay a couple hundred dollars and you take a class at home and you and they give you all their insight, which I mean, it's not going to make you, but it's certainly going to help you sort of organize and learn a bunch of stuff that you wouldn't otherwise. When when did you hear about? getting Martin Scorsese teaching a class, never. Well, today he does in master class. So you could, you could actually learn from him. The other thing is you take an iPhone today, which everybody has an iPhone, any phone with, with a you know 4K camera, they have capabilities of filming. You could f put a film together with a, with a, you know, a, a, um, a Nikon camera or a phone and you can film an entire movie. So, the, the possibilities, and then as far as platforms, before, who was going to show your stuff? Nobody was going to show 
uh, oh, I made a movie. Uh, can you distribute it for me? I'm like, go fuck yourself. Who, who are you? <laughs> and and today, I go on YouTube and you could see my movie and I can get a million hits. And and if I get a million hits, then I make money and I can put together another movie. So you could self start, which we didn't have that option. And it's not saying oh poor us. It's just the way it was. And you know, but today there are so many possibilities and people. Today, I think there is no excuse. There's never no, ex, you know, an excuse. But today, even less. If you want to make movies, make movies. Do research online. It's it, it's at your the world is at your fingertips, and then just get a camera, get a small thing, start doing shorts, start doing stuff, start putting it on YouTube. Get, see the reaction from people. If you get thumbs up, then you're doing the right thing. If you get thumbs down, then you re you know restructure, do something different. I think that's that's the ultimate thing just doing and again what marcelo said it's about passion if you're doing it for money you're doing it for the wrong reason if, sure. if you like what you do for work you'll never have to work a day in your life and that's very true and that's the bottom line it's just that easy today very true do you have anything to speak about that uh mark yeah, I agree with both of them. Um, basically, uh, you know, I teach uh, acting students quite a bit. I've been doing it for five years, and I tell my oh, wow. students, I tell them first, you got to find your passion. Once you find that passion, you just got to go balls to the wall and don't stop. There's going to be things in your life that come at you and change course, and people will say, "Oh, you can't do it. You're going to fail." They're going to try and take you out of the game. Whatever it takes, stay in it, do it. You've got all the platforms, you've got all the equipment, you've got everything right in front of you, but you got to do your homework. You got to know your craft and you got to do your art because the competition out there is so fierce these days. Yep. It's Brutal. insane. So if it's truly not in your heart and in your brain, 110%, you won't survive. You'll, you'll want to give up. You'll want to kick it. You'll say, I'm no good. And you'll let all those outside factors just let you, yourself implode. So the main thing is find your passion, learn about your craft and your art, and be the best that you can be at it. And then figure out every way, every platform to get it out there. And like Marcelo, however long it takes, you never give up. Very true. I like that. Yep. I agree. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So was for um, you guys, you know, with the acting and all that stuff, how how was it with wearing those spacesuits? Was it hot? Were you guys, was that bearable <laughs> for wearing those spacesuits? I try to keep it all in a positive perspective. So if it's hot and I'm sweating, I'm going, hey, man, I'm losing weight. I'm going to look good when I get out of the spacesuit. You know, I'm going to be Oh, rich. shit. You oh, know? shit. <laughs> You got to try to keep it in perspective, you know, and, and keep it positive because there's going to be times when you're out in the middle of the Antarctic, you know, sitting, sitting, sitting under a tauntaun, freezing your butt off. What are you going to do? Cry like a baby or just do the job? <laughs> Dude, we were out. We were out in needles filming that uh, that that scene. Um from uh, you know when I'm when I'm locating your ass, the prototype has been located. That thing was so so hot, and the sun was burning my brain. So yeah, and, and yeah, no, it was, uh, yeah, needless to say, production did not have a air conditioning. Uh, no, we did not units and, out there in the desert. The wardrobe <laughs> that that suit that he was wearing, this you know the helmet, you know, has a little tank of you know like a little battery power, but you have you know to get him oxygen. And I don't know why, but it got mixed up. So he got the grown size. He got a smaller size, which is really tight. Oh, boy. And then they forgot to give us the gloves, the black gloves. So <laughs> the actual suit that he tried on was sitting you know, somewhere. And we, we ended up with a small, little tight. Imagine you're putting this thing really tight. And then you can't breathe. And the helmet is tight, tight, tight. And he was poor guy. You know, he was like suffering. Oh, uh, uh, you know, and then you know, until we get it all done, you know, so it's like, you know, it's, it's tough. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, it difficult? was a little short here on the uh, yeah. on the leg. So my balls were up, uh, you know, by yeah. my throat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, What's I don't know if we can say all this right? stuff, Jer Tigger. <laughs> yeah, you guys should be good. Uh, you know, I honestly don't think I don't. I think it's. I, I think he actually does doesn't mind having explicit on here. Um, with uh, with the stuff that I do and everything like that, sometimes I I bleep the stuff out and all that. But I think he he doesn't he doesn't right. really have me bleep anything out. So you guys, yeah, are good was with a, that. a hell of a lot of bleeping. <laughs> was now it difficult? We, we kept it pretty clean. Yeah, yeah, for the most part. <laughs> so if there, so if I do have to do, it's not too big of a deal. <laughs> was it difficult acting in something like this where you don't have like any like for the some of the green screen parts and stuff like that? You didn't actually have you know some of the stuff there for you guys to experience that the what you're you know going through or whatnot. You had to kind of like have it more in your head. How was that like? Was it difficult? It's harder than with props so for sure. Yeah, but it's all part of the actor's training these days. You know, you know, you're going to have green screen work or blue screen work, and you got to build it in your mind's eye. So, you know, if they put, they say the T Rex is 20 feet up right in front of you, you better know exactly where and how you're going to react to it, and et cetera, et cetera. So, and you what know, 20 feet the, looks like. Otherwise, you'll be looking yeah. here. <laughs> well, they, may have a ten, they may have a tennis ball hanging out there for you. But, you know, that goes back to your training as an actor. You, you just got to be disciplined and do that homework. And then so when you're on set, you can be professional and knock it out. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. I can so, curb. For all three of you guys, um, how was it like working with each other? Was it, was it uh, you know, did you guys have any hard times or anything like that? Agreeing on anything or, you know, did it run pretty smoothly and all that? I'm easy like a Sunday morning, but no, these guys are great. Um, <laughs> very professional. Um, I'm always joking. I'm always, you know, having fun, sometimes a little too much. But, you know, I think uh, maintaining a, a fun work atmosphere, you could still do professional and still sort of keep it fun and, and entertaining. And then yeah. it, it just it just flows a lot better than, than being, oh, you know, we're on set, shut the fuck up. It's like, oh, you take this seriously i take it seriously the fact that i do jokes and stuff doesn't mean i don't take it seriously it's just sure. you know i have fun with it and and that's that's for me that's it and if i may in every any, any shoot days that we had all, all you know all, all this time every happened every single day at the end of the shoot the day you know the last shot nobody wants to go home like they're like let's everybody's like had this feeling that you know i had extras hang out and wait the main you know actors want to do more everybody's like we love it so much so you know we wanted and we had a good time you know that shows that you know if you hated it you know it will be like it's just you want to leave yeah you know, am i done was, am i wrapped no no yeah <laughs> <Can I go? laughs> so that was, that was good, you know from my from my point i was like you know what i'm doing the right thing here if i have i'm going you know I'm going forward you know it's, like, it's good Good, a good feeling, you know. I mean, you work so hard, and then you get to the end of it, and you're like, you know, people they believe in what you're doing, you know, so they're, they're happy, you know, to be working with you, you know, doing the work. So it's good, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, every time we got back together to shoot, it was like a big family reunion, you know. So we we usually have a couple days to, you know, acclimate and see each other again, have a barbecue. These guys were great at making barbecue and stuff like that, <laughs> and. So, you know, we, we get on set and we just kind of click and work together. I don't ever really recall any big fights or disagreements. Um, if there were, ever. we worked we work through them and we were professional because we wanted to get the job done and do it right. Yeah, for sure. So you guys basically built like good friends, you know, on it too. Our business partners and friends. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Um, is there anything that, you know, any of you three want to, you know, you know, Tell us more about what's going to be coming up for you guys. Yeah, yeah just plans? just look, go see the movie and. Uh, you oh, might no. cut off or something. It's or you might have froze. Yeah, as Tony was saying, go see the movie. Have some fun. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah. And tell your friends to go see the movie. <laughs> He's back. All right. So, yeah, go see the movie and just go see it with, with the knowledge, which which most people don't have. Of, of what it took to make the yeah. time, the perseverance of Marcelo and the whole crew and cast and, and, and just enjoy it for something that was done with, with passion. And in, in spite of the, you know, I want to say hundreds of obstacles that we face, which is, it's not exaggerated. 
and, and enjoy it. You know, it's easy to criticize and to put a one star on a movie if it was done with like, you know, unlimited budget and, 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 you know, it's got flaws, but when it's done like this, you know, have in mind how it was done. And, and, you know, we promise you the next one will knock your socks off. <laughs> Is there any th works that you guys have coming up that you want to, you know, advertise a little bit, get people tuned in or ready to, you know, see it uh, coming up or whatnot, or, you know, anything that you guys want to say, like that you're going to be involved with, or, or is, you know, it might, it might be secret and stuff like that for now until, you know, things get closer, but is there anything you guys do want to, you know, publicize? Uh, well, no, I'm, actually, I'm actually looking for an agent right now. So I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, so if, any, if anybody's out there looking for an acting agent, cause I want to get more into acting than producing and whatnot. So there you go. <laughs> anything I'm available. For you yeah, um, I have I have four movies on digital platforms right now, which is great. One's called The Prototype. <laughs> one's called Broken Gaiety, which probably comes out in another month. And then I have one called River. I have another one called The Big Mistake and uh, Lost Padre Mine. So, you know, we're, we're just cranking out little indie films here and there, you know. Everybody's trying to do their best with what they have, and we sh usually shoot on weekends because everybody has their day jobs, and uh, we're just putting things together and getting out there. But our last movie, Broken Gaetti, um, has won awards all over the world, so when it releases, hopefully it'll do really well. I, like the I want to see that, Mark. <laughs> yeah, it's intense. Cool. Anything Very for cool. you, Marcelo? Uh, for people, the audience, you want to follow up with our progress on the movie you, you can always check on the facebook page energia films uh page and facebook um i'm very easy to find you know online you just google my name and you will get all the links and stuff and then for the next project um first i'd like to see this movie you know uh, go forward you know now the following weeks uh and then you know we'll see how how it's performing and then you know i have other projects obviously but you know it's I, I just take one step at a time, you know, and the, I'm like, you know, I devoted myself to this one. Now I want to make sure that it's, you know, continuing, you know, because that's what happens to a lot of filmmakers. They they, they finish a movie and that they're completely, completely out of resources, exhausted. They don't want to talk about a movie, you know, they're like, and in my opinion, that's a mistake. You should be even more involved, you know, to continue because this is when you're getting to, you know, you already achieved something big, you know, you, you have to make the next step. I just want to make sure that I make that next step that is a for sure step, uh, you know, and I, I go forward with something that is, you know, going to move my career and others, you know, forward, you know. True, true. Yeah, that's great. So I will link your guys' you know, social medias if you have any in you know the you know, description and stuff like that. I'll make sure that's in there. You know, I'll be doing a little bit of editing and stuff like that. So some of the stuff I might show like pictures or whatnot. But yeah, so it was great having you guys on. You know, I'm sure Terry wishes he could uh, make it today, but um, I was glad I was able to you know come through and be able to you know make sure the show goes on. <laughs> No, let me tell Thank you, man. you so you're, much, man. Thanks you're a for great, a great host. Let me tell Thank you. you. I know you're feeling fantastic. Yeah, you're a great host. Thank you very it's been, much. <laughs> it's been fun, man. It's been fun. For take sure. Take care, Jerry Taker. Yes, take care. Yeah. Thank bye -bye. you Thanks for being on. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Mark. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Bye bye. Have a good day. <laughs> you too. Later. What'd you guys think of the episode, huh? I uh, definitely recommend you guys to watch it and uh, just tell me what you think of it. You know, I, these are fun to watch and listen to because it always changes your perspective of the of a movie when you get to talk to the people involved in the project. Um, in the description below is the link for the movie. Uh, if you want to follow the director or the stars we had on the show, the link's below. Uh, the movie should be available in the link below. If you want to uh, subscribe to Jer Taker, he's got lots of music out there coming out. Link below. I hope you guys had a great listening, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.